I'm Marisol Castillo, and I'm Ariana Davis. On this week's episode, we'll be focusing on something that we hear almost all the time. It's when we wake up, it's when we go to bed at night. You mean the sound of a grumpy roommate? No, Marisol. I mean the sound of music. Oh, music, of course. Music is all around us and in many different ways. From the dusty records we find in our parents' basements to the MP3s we download onto our iPods, music is a constant source of culture and entertainment. That's right, and here at LaSalle, and in our beautiful city of Philadelphia, we're lucky enough to experience music in many different ways. One of my favorite places to hear music is at the Tom Goal Arena. You must be talking about LaSalle's pep band that accompanies the basketball team at every home game. I sure am. Because we consider the pep band to be such an important part of LaSalle, we sent some reporters to find out what's so fantastic about this fantastic group. Anniversary. We took a look at the history of LaSalle's premium performing arts group, the Jazz and Pep Bands. The LaSalle Jazz and Pep Band began in 1977 under the direction of Joseph Cicinara, and he ushered in a new era of music at LaSalle. The band had existed in various forms before 1977, but it undertook its current form in 1977. Under the dynamic duo of Joseph Chichamaro as director and brother Tom McPhillips as advisor, the LaSalle band began to expand into the 1980s where the band's profile began to expand with both on-campus and off-campus performances, including open houses and the annual spring concert. Heading into the 1990s, the pet band began to expand under the umbrella of the jazz band and the group began playing at basketball games, and even a few of the home football games back when there was a football team. Heading into the 2000s, the band continued to show their performances as the jazz band, as well as basketball games for the pet band. As of 2012, the jazz and pet bands continue to perform under the direction of our new director, Chuck Callahan, and are looking forward to a promising future full of fun and exciting performances. to hear what they have planned for this year's basketball season. You know what, Ariana? I'm surprised the pet band hasn't been offered a recording contract yet. I was thinking the same thing. I thought Dusty on Records would have jumped on that ship a long time ago. Speaking of ships, I love a good pirate tune every now and then. In fact, I'm fond of almost all genres of music. Pirate songs, rock and roll, blues, jazz, country, hip-hop. I'm sure we could go on for days naming all the favorite types of music. Well, let's catch up with some of the students here to see what their musical tastes are. After us, we're going to be walking around asking students what their interest is in music. Um, probably the lyrics, just because I feel like the lyrics show a lot more of like the sentimental value of like the song and why the person wrote it. Wrote it. Um, well, the beat usually, like, draws me in, but the lyrics are, like, the most important part. I like the whole musicianship, the writing process, and how creative that different people can be, and, like, puts up together, and especially when they collaborate with other people, like, the kind of music they can make. Plus, voices and guitar work, really. Just any sort of cool guitar riffs, or uh, there has to be a good singer, that's for sure. Um, usually the lyrics. I always look for a song with really strong lyrics that catch my attention. I grew up a lot with classic rock because of my father, so I love, like, the Rolling Stones, the Ramones, just, like, the whole genre of music, so. Uh, I kind of dabble in all of them, but I guess, like, country, probably. Anything and everything under the sun. My mind is actually music. Um, I like everything, but if I had to pick a specific genre, I do like classic rock, I do like techno music a lot, too. Uh, alternative music, definitely 90s alternative and kind of updated stuff. Um, I got really big into fish this summer, so I wouldn't say it's my favorite group, but I'd say it's definitely up there. Uh, my favorite band is the men. The Jonas Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> a little weird, but <laughs> not really. I've been playing guitar since I was seven years old, so pretty much anything with technical guitar or anything that has a lot of feel to it, I really enjoy it. Favorite band, um, Red Sevenfold or Blink-182, two different guys that you can see. One is post-hardcore, the other is more pop-punk. I do those are my two favorite bands, I'd have to say. 
Those were just a few opinions on what the students here at LaSalle feel about music. I'm Jamie Pino from LaSalle, Adelphia. There definitely were some interesting choices. I'd like to give them a little piece on something. I'll agree with you on that. Right now, we have to take a strict commercial break, but we'll be back quickly when you can read the Declaration of Independence. Stay tuned. University Communication Center, home of LaSalle TV. Located on the scenic South Campus of LaSalle University near St. Lucian International Institute. St. John Newman Residence Hall, stone store away from the Communication Department building. And of course, Treetops Cafe, one of LaSalle's many fine dining halls. With all of these conveniences, make the LaSalle TV studio your next stop. But don't take our word for it. Ask a resident. And that's about LaSalle TV. LaSalle TV, we know you well. Welcome back to the South Delphia. Here on campus, we have a number of organizations that work hard to create events and activities to share with the LaSalle community. And one of those groups is The Mask, a student-run theater organization that has been entertaining us for more than 50 years. Each year, The Mask produces a musical that can be attended by students of the community alike. Here to give us a look at what they're up to this fall are Zach and Chaka. I'm Chaka Tomatelli, and I'm here with The Mask to try and catch up and see what we can find out about the musical The Drowsy Chaperone. Let's take a look. The show is about a man who lives in his weird apartment and listens to records all day, and one day he decides to share with the audience one of his favorites, The Drowsy Chaperone. And when he puts the record on, the show takes place in his kitchen. The show itself is about a uh, showgirl who's giving up the stage for love, and um, her chaperone, who is basically a drunk, uh, who ends up finding love herself. Uh, we have the producer, uh, the stage, the stage girl show, uh, who's trying to get her back and trying to keep her in show business because he works for, um, or his show is being sponsored by a bunch of gangsters, and they want to keep her in the show as well, so that way they can always have good shows. We caught up with two of the cast members and asked them to tell us about the dancing and the choreography. Dancing is intense. <laughs> uh, there's a few of the numbers that are pretty tough. Um, big ensemble numbers, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, it's just a great time. If you go Zumba, go to this instead. Because fortunately, all the kicking and running around stuff, I always get sweat at the end, but you should rehearse all the time. It's definitely worth it in the end, though. Yeah, we have set finish, we have costume, what the line, what's the guitar string up. You guys will have a great time. I guarantee it. Looks like it's going to be a great show. For La Philadelphia, I'm Chaka Tomatelli. That looks like it's going to be a great show. It sure does. And one of the best things about mask shows is that each La Salle student receives one free ticket with their student ID. That's awesome. Another type of musical entertainment I think everyone can enjoy and should experience is seeing one of their favorite bands live in concert. You're right, Ariana. There's something about a concert that you can't find anywhere else. What's your favorite concert you've seen? Hmm, I would definitely have to say Hanson. How about you, Mary Sox? I have seen my chemical romance. And while I'm sure we've both seen some pretty great shows, there's one venue not far from campus that offers a fantastic concert-going experience. 
Here's this week's edition of Philly Vines covering worldwide pop life. Love music. As you can see. That's why we decided that on this edition of Philly Vines, we're going to take you to one of our favorite spots to go see a live show. That's right. We're going to go to World Cafe Live. You can come here to eat with your friends and listen to various musicians as they play live only a few feet from your table. With two levels to choose from, though, World Cafe Live has something for everyone. World Cafe Live is located right near the campuses of Drexel and University of Pennsylvania. But that doesn't mean that Drexel and UPenn students can have all the fun. It's just a short subway ride away from LaSalle. You can buy tickets the same day as the show, so just walk right in. World Cafe Live is also the home of WXPN Radio. On this station, you can hear from bands such as the Dave Matthews Band, Florence and the Machine, and Bob Dylan. You know, all of our favorites. World Cafe Live has been bringing music to Philadelphia for over 20 years. To get the full lineup, go to www.worldcafelive.com. We had the chance to sit down with one employee who gave us a scoop. We get everything from rap and hip hop, we have a death metal band, we get reggae, country, just everything comes through here. I get to see everything that comes through here. Average price range for a show here is anywhere from 10 to $20. The higher end show, maybe 25 or 30 but anywhere from 10 to 20 I would say. Food's really good here. Uh, the recommendation would be the wings, the barbecue wings with extra blue cheese are killer. World's Cafe Live. Come here any next day. Thanks, guys. I'd like to go there for the next show I see. It really seems like the perfect environment for a band to play in, and just a few blocks from Philly's two stations. In addition to World Cafe Live, there are numerous other venues located downtown to see your favorite musical acts. If you're looking to hear local bands, try out the Kung Fu Necktie, Union Transfer, and Johnny Bendis. And for the bigger acts, the Electric Factory, the Tower Theater, and Chaka Zero Theater are the places to go. Moving away from professional musicians and more toward performers right here on campus, we at the Philadelphia want to bring you a special look at some students who have decided to try their hand at the music scene. One of our reporters sat down with them to get the scoop. Time and music, we look at the band Sweet Island. Sweet Island released their seven-song self-titled album in 2011. After only a year and a half, the band decided to split. This is their story behind the music. I'm here with the lead guitarist for Sweet Island, Pete Stanger. So, Pete, what's life been like since the band split up? Well, oh, it's uh, been really, really cool. We got uh, a lot going on. What was it like winning Battle of the Bands? It was, uh, it was awesome. There were, you know, like 12 people there. And we, were, we had a great time. So, are you still struggling with your addiction to apple juice? Well, I think. Isn't just life in terms of struggling? I'm here with Kate Kennedy, the lead singer of Sweet Island. So, Kate, what's life been like since the band split up? Well, it's been pretty good. Just kind of hanging out, being Jack all day, every day. And what was it like being the only girl in the band? I feel like even though we were different sexes, it didn't matter because we all loved music. We were all there. It was a good time. Where are Tom and Bill? I ain't calling it, I don't know. Where are Tom and Bill? Tom and Bill. I don't know where they are. I don't know. What's your favorite thing to do as a band? I'd say practice every week with people. Our gigs are fun, even though we rarely have people there. So why did you guys break up? You know, I'm really like a personal decision for me. You know, it's time for me to like branch out. Getting a lot of calls from people who are the ones that you know, call from you know, the Kenny manager. You know, Will John stop by one day? You know, I spent some time with the Frey in, in 2019. Like, you know, I'm, I'm kicking around a lot of different people. It was, uh, it was time, time to, to move on. 
I don't know, I think we all just needed a break, and, you know, I don't want to be there on the thing, and it was a good time. But uh, I think I just really wanted to spend more time with my mom and all my job. The top wire Pete is now working with many well-known artists, while lead singer Kate is still suffering mentally from the band split almost a year ago. No one has seen or heard from drummer Bill Marconi and bass player Tom Dawson. This is Bernadette Sampa with this edition of Behind the Music. Being a part of a band looks like fun. What do you think about starting at Aqua Newton, Arizona? That's a great idea. We'll call ourselves Led Zeppelin, we'll start small on campus, and be selling out Madison Square Garden in no time. That's an awful name for any band. While Marisol and I are laying out the foundations of our new app, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to interview a LaSalle professor on his musical talents. Department is one of the largest majors by enrollment. Despite the size, faculty, and staff, we still work with the students step by step to prepare them for future endeavors. For more information, visit us on the web at www.lasalle.edu. While we have them in class, our professors educate us in both course material and life lessons. Some professors, though, have musical talents that aren't seen in the classroom setting. Those talents can be just as valuable as their teaching abilities. Today I'm here with Dr. David Falcone of the Psych Department to talk to him about just that. Welcome, Dr. Falcone. Nice to be here. So we've been talking about music all day. So can you tell me about your experience with music? What instruments do you play? Well, I play acoustic guitar. And uh, I've been playing for quite a while uh, in lots of uh, different ways. Uh, but mostly now, it's uh, kind of Celtic music, uh, folk-based music, lots of instrumental music, tons of fun. What got you into that? What got you to start playing? Uh, what got me into it? You know, when you reach a certain point in your life, you, you make up answers to questions like that. So I'm going to give it my best guess. I'm going to say it was friends, buddies. Uh, I was in high school, uh, and, and guitar was an easy instrument to learn because it was you didn't have to take lessons. So I'm going to guess that's how it started back then. Yeah. Well, what is it you love so much about guitar? Oh, man. Uh, it's hard to answer. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it was a very close relationship you develop, and I'm sure this is true for all instruments, uh, but you develop a relationship with the instrument that, uh, that, that you can't distinguish where you begin and where it ends, and, and it produces you as you produce it. It's, it's just a, a very intimate kind of uh, experience with that. And you experience that a lot with Celtic music? That's what uh, you're absolutely. Like? Absolutely. Uh, and, and folk-based music. I mean, you, you know, there's music that you play because it's the music that you enjoy the most. But then once you start performing, you, you begin to move one way or the other as a function of what it is your audience responds to. And, uh, and if you're lucky, it all comes together uh, in the same place, which does happen occasionally. It's, it's wonderful. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah. We hope that happens in our classroom occasionally. Anytime. <laughs> and do you ever bring music into the classroom? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I've tried uh, to keep uh, 
what I do musically and what I do in the classroom separate. Although I let it leak in occasionally, uh, I'll be doing a PowerPoint and after talking about the standard deviation that you mentioned, and I'm telling you this weekend that John and Pedro is in Louisville for something. So, uh, do you ever play with students? Uh, I only did one time. I'm a solo guy. Uh, I'm a gypsy. I don't know a whole lot about music, uh, so it's it's hard to coordinate with others. But um, uh, uh, we'll see what happens in the future about that. And do you know how many interesting performance situations that have happened to you? What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you while you were performing? Um, no, the, the craziest thing that happened to me is, is uh, um, the, well, the craziest thing that happened to me is I probably, the story I don't want to tell, I picked a, a wrong song, but there's a, but, a, but the second craziest thing was a friend of mine uh, came uh, to see me play who had just uh, uh, broken up with his uh, girlfriend, whose name was Lisa. And he showed up at a, at a gig I was playing um, with his new girlfriend. And, uh, and the first relationship was a long-standing one, so it's not a small deal. And uh, for some reason, he walked in, sat at the front table, and I sang Pat Stevens' Sad Lisa. And uh, he looked up at me like, are you crazy? You know? And I, could, I sensed while right in the middle of the song what I was doing. And I would have changed the words if I could have, but... I couldn't. It was just pretty crazy. So you went from Cat Stevens to Celtic music. Yeah. How well, did actually, that um, well, they're not all that far off from each other. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the thread that underlies, uh, that runs through m much music, uh, it, it, it's not all that different, really. Uh, but but I, I started really with uh, Hugh, Paul, and Mary, and, and uh, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, folk, basic folk music in the late 60s. And then I went from that to uh, Cat Stevens, which is not all that different. And then that took me to Neil Young. Uh, there was a period I was doing more Neil Young than Neil Young. And, uh, and then I bumped into Leo Kotke. And if I started talking about the people that influenced me most now, no one would know who I was talking about. Uh, Leo Kotke, John Fahey, uh, Pierre Ben Toussaint, John Renborn. These are all European Celtic finger uh, style guitar uh, folks. Uh, beautiful music. And, and what they get a guitar to do and what they taught me, uh, it, it, it's just nice to be part of it. That sounds interesting. Yeah, well, it, it's a lot of fun. So, do you make your own music or do you still do a lot of covers of things that they do and stuff like that? No, I, I uh, uh, write a lot of my own uh, music. Um, uh, I write instrumentals. Uh, well, I don't actually write them. I play them, and then I, I have a kind of thing called a tab tablature that I that I, I make some record of them, so I don't lose them. Um, and I have written some vocals. Uh, I have a couple CDs, and uh, you know, and I play local regularly, so uh, I get to, to 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 get the music out. Um, uh, it's it's important to, to keep it balanced with the, with the whole teaching thing. You know, I mean, there's no question this is a, something I do on the side to fill up the holes. Well, I have really enjoyed talking to you. I've learned a lot about Celtic music. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining us today, Professor Poplar. Yeah. Um, just as we learn, our teachers might have a special ability that we aren't aware of. The same goes for many of our students. Focusing on an art form that goes hand in hand with music, we caught up with a member of LaSalle University's Dance Society. Here's what she had to say. Um, I'm an international business and finance major. I've been on Dance Society's team for about two years now. Um, I'm a secretary on the e board. We focus on uh, modern contemporary and hip hop, which no other club does at, um, on LaSalle campus. It started between two friends. Um, they really had, they were passionate about dance, and they were on a lot of shows in high school. So when they came here, um, they wanted to um, start a dance group that was different from the dance team. We have practices about um, three times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. 
we hold about two shows a year, um, one in the, which is one in the fall and one in the spring. We usually try to use unique music, basically, that is either composed by someone that we know or um, our advisor. Basically, our theme is about suffering and anger and pain, um, so we show that through um, books and many other props. Basically, this year we have um, we had a choreographer come in from um, the Art Philadelphia Arts Institute. So she chose this theme for um, the semester. It's just something that's unusual and something that the students will get to see, which will be new. Our next show is on November 29th, and it's from 12 to 2 um, in the Van Rodden Theater. So please come out and watch us. It's amazing to see all the hard work that us all students put into the organizations and activities that they love. I couldn't agree more, Ariana. To sum it up, today we looked at the way that students are able to connect with music on and off campus. There are many opportunities for us to experience the musical art form in new ways. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of La Philadelphia. We hope that you learned a lot today from La Salle students. If you would like to contact us, feel free to send an email or visit our website. Until next time, I'm Marisol Custodio. And I'm Ariana Davis. Thanks again for tuning in to La Philadelphia.